Hello readers, I'm the Avid Reader and today we're reviewing The 20 Years Crisis, 1919 to 1939, an introduction to the study of international relations by Edward Hallett Carr, aka E.H. Carr. So E.H. Carr is a classical realist. He's one of the first international scholars. And this book criticizes a lot the League of Nations and the concept of international law. And it really emphasizes the importance of power in politics compared to morality, for example. So the book is in five parts. The first part discusses the science of international politics. And here he talks about the dual concepts of utopia and reality. So utopians view things as a goal or how things should be the morality of a thing, while reality is viewed through the constraints of power and how you can maximize your power. And E.H. Carr here describes that you can modify facts, that there's not really any objective morality. He contrasts two types of people in international politics, the intellectual, who is a utopian, so an intellectual could think that the government should do so and so because it is good for the majority, while the bureaucrat would think the government should do so and so because it is good for the state. So remember, realists have an emphasis on the state instead of the people. The second part he calls crisis and here and here he criticizes the idea of free trade and of laissez-faire and he disagrees that capitalism creates a harmony of interest. So I would say in this book E.H. Carr does not really understand economics. He views free market rhetoric as something that benefits the owners and free trade benefits the British Empire. So at no point in this book does E.H. Carr acknowledge that some economic systems benefit everyone or that free trade could benefit all countries. So you can clearly see here that E.H. Carr does not believe that economics is independent of politics. He thinks that politics can make economics. He disagrees that all countries have a common interest to have peace and he claims that people who favor peace are those in the status quo establishment who benefit from keeping the peace. So for example if you have country A that have certain borders it is in their interest to keep the status quo while country B may favor war to increase their power. And he doesn't believe there are any universal values and he states that cosmopolitanism well he says that's just the values of one country so cosmopolitanism would be something usually anglo-saxon so he doesn't believe there are universal principles and he believes that countries will prioritize the national interest ahead of production he never really explains how the national interest benefits the people in the country so in a couple of sentences E.H. Carr he believes that peace that favors some people in the least favor of some others and then free trade benefits some at the expense of others so so he argues that the harmony of interest in practice is some so-called Darwinism which destroys some people in favor of the superior. In the third part he discusses power and morality and he claims that morality and politics are interconnected so he doesn't think there is a private sphere of morals and then the government doing their own stuff. He doesn't believe that you can separate economics from politics as free marketers would want to. He actually thinks that autarky self-sufficiency is in the national interest. This ignores of course that autarky limits your resources available so you have to go to war to acquire more of them. And he basically declares there are three types of power. There is military power, that's pretty much self-explanatory. And then you've got economic power. So some treaties that people establish, they will favor one over the other. So for example, there is no sense of equality really when two countries talk together. So the United States, because it has economic superiority, it can dominate Latin America. And here again, Carr ignores whether this could benefit actually Latin America, instead of thinking that it's only for the benefit of the United States at the expense of Nicaragua or some other country. E.H. Carr doesn't believe there's really any equality and... and and he believes the rule of law benefits some yeah. so yeah so he says it's a false dr so he says so he states because of power you can never have equality between nations or between individuals so we got owner and labor one is more powerful than the other. You've got different countries. So for example, Germany will not treat Lithuania as an equal because they view them as inferior. The fourth part is law and change. And he views law as a function of a political society. So he doesn't view law as separate from politics. And he thinks that people will ignore the law when it benefits them. So able to increase their power, to increase their wages, for example, they will use coercion, violence, strikes. And he disagrees that there is a sanctity of treaties. So when treaties are formed, they're often unequal. And party A creates a treaty because it will benefit them. But it may be unbeneficial to party B. 
and then when party B thinks it's relevant, they will disregard the treaty and they believe that the time of the treaty isn't anymore relevant. So for example, the United States loans a bunch of money to Great Britain during World War One, and then 15 years later, the British don't believe they have to repay it. Not because of a legal reason, but because of a moral reason. So power and morality trump the law. If you look at this cynically, basically it states treaties mean nothing. You can disregard them and you can disregard the rule of law. So screw the constitution, for example. You can see the danger of this mentality that is collectivistic and you can justify authoritarianism and totalitarianism with this. And he also talks about international law. There is a judiciary failure here. The thing often with these courts here in the League of Nations is they don't actually deal with anything that's vital, that's very important for the national honor of a country. So in the end, the issues they discuss are pretty worthless since they don't really mean anything. And the difference between an international court and a national court is that the national court is mandatory while the international court is limited and it's voluntary. So a country can pretty much ignore it and on important issues, it's irrelevant. He also talks about how consent is created often through coercion. So Carr argues that you can ignore the law and use coercion to obtain your ends. And this is what unions may do through violent strikes. This is what Ireland did when it separated from the UK, it used some violence. And Carr's conclusion in all of this is that power is key in all of this, that in a new world order, you will need to have large spending packages to improve the lot of the common people and multiple times in this book, some of the ideas held by some people, he views as hypocritical and that's his book. So how would I rate the 20 years crisis? I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. This is not a good book. This is not a good book on global politics. It's also a bit incoherent. You see, when you read Mersheimer, it's quite clear what he argues for. It's quite clear the system he explains, but this book is just confusing. And then he disregards the concept of law. He disregards the concept of economics, basically. He doesn't understand that not everything is relative. Some things benefit everyone, maybe some more than others, but E.H. Carr doesn't understand that inequality isn't necessarily bad. When people advocate for a system, it's not because they are privileged or because they benefit by it. It may actually benefit everyone in the long term. This version of classical realism, it's an okay book. He brings up some interesting points. He brings up points why the system of the League of Nations during the interwar period was a failure. And he argues that pretty well. But then the alternative view of things he presents is wrong. It's not clear. It doesn't really make any sense. It's contradictory in a sense. At the beginning of the book, he argued that you can modify facts. Well, you can't. And he seems to believe that everything is relative and he can't possibly fathom that some people and some states are more moral than others. So yeah, six out of 10. So this was the Avid Reader's review of the 20 years crisis, 1919 to 1939, an introduction to the study of international relations written by Edward Hallett Carr, E.H. Carr, in 1939, it got a six out of 10. I hope you readers enjoyed this book review and I will see you readers next time.